Hello and welcome to Learn From the Experts. I am Freda Brown and today we're going to talk about a serious subject, but one we all need to know more about. How is your, how to make sure your family is legally prepared when a loved one, family member passes away. Today we have attorney Lisa Beauvais and she is a estate uh, and probate family lawyer, estate lawyer. And Lisa, death is a tough subject. How do we approach that with our families? It is a very tough subject, Freda, and the, the biggest challenge in all this is communication. It's very important for parents to sit with their adult children, their loved ones, other family members, and really take the time to talk to them and express to them what their wishes are. And beyond that, the next step would be to see an estate plan and attorney to talk about what their wishes are and how they can accomplish that by doing the proper legal documents. So what are the proper legal documents that everybody should have? Well, the very basic estate plan and documents usually consist of a will, a power of attorney, and a health care proxy. Those are the three most important. There are various types of trusts um, which may or may not be needed, but the three basic are the will, the power of attorney, and the health care proxy. And so what exactly is the difference between a power of attorney and a health care proxy? A power of attorney is a document where you nominate somebody to serve as your attorney, in fact, to handle all of your finances for you. So they will handle everything financially related, such as real estate, bank accounts, stock and bonds, and they will handle those matters for you in your capacity while you're living if you're unable to for any reason. So if you're suffering from an illness, um, whether it be a physical illness and unable to make those decisions or um, some type of a mental illness where you can no longer make your financial decisions, somebody will step into your shoes and continue on for you for the remainder of your life or till you become capacitated again. A healthcare proxy document nominates somebody to handle all of your medical issues for you. So there is a big difference between the two documents. And in the healthcare proxy, we can include all sorts of language uh, regarding life sustaining and treatment also, so that the, your wishes are very clearly expressed to your loved ones. So should that be a different person that's the healthcare proxy and the um, power of attorney? That's really up to the individual. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Um, many times, um, parents choose their adult children. Uh, they may choose one child over the other, depending on whether one child is more financially savvy than the other. Uh, they may pick someone for their health care proxy if they have a family member who's in the medical field, maybe a nurse or a doctor or somebody who has medical experience. So it's really best for the family to really have this conversation with their family, talk about who would be the best person to put in that position, whether it's the same or, or different family member. I have, I have my son is one son that's a, for my for each of them. I have two mm -hmm. sons, one for each of them, and, and I chose them for, for different reasons. And one because uh, neither of them are in the healthcare field, but one's more compassionate, and so uh, he's the one that's doing my health proxy. I hear that yeah. a lot. There's uh -huh. usually one child that's more compassionate, and there's one that's really good with the books. So yeah. so it, it definitely can mix. So the will, the will. Um, you know, everybody says, do you have a will or do you don't have a will? Do I need a will? How important is having a will and what happens if you don't have a will? A will is very important to have because that is the one document that's going to tell the courts, tell your family where you want your property to go upon your death. Um, without having that document, the state has statutes in place that will direct where your property goes. So even if you think your property is going to go to your spouse or your children, well, depending on the dynamics of that family, it may not. It may go some to them and it may go to other family members that you may not have intended uh, for, for your property to go to. So it is very important because not only does it direct where your assets go, 
but you can have provisions for guardians if you have minor children. You can um, have express wishes about what you want to happen to your remains upon your death. Um, and there's, this will can be fine-tuned to meet every family's unique situation. So it is extremely important if you want to guarantee um, as best as possible that your assets go to who you want to. You made a point about children. So really young people should have wills as well, especially if they have children. Absolutely. That's one of the um, um, situations where I really try to uh, uh, press upon young couples who have children is that a, a child, if, if, that ch if a child comes into an inheritance and they're under the age of 18, um, a custodian or a conservator is going to have to be appointed in order to take control of that, those assets until the child is 18. Um, the parents may want to nominate a guardian uh, for their child in the event that they're both deceased. And without it, there could be a lot of family quarreling uh, amongst different sides of the family over who's going to manage the money for that child and who's going to take care of the child. So it's extremely important for all couples with young children to have a will. Excellent. So does a will keep, you know, I always hear the word probate, probate. We're going to go to probate. It doesn't have to go to probate. How do you, what, what is probate and how does it affect a, a, a person who is deceased? Probate is the court process of having the will allowed um, and having the court approve the will and appoint the personal representative to serve. So the term probate is the actual court process. Whether or not you need to probate depends on how your assets are structured upon your death. So assets that are held jointly with another individual or assets that have a beneficiary on them will not have to go through the probate process. Those will pass outside of probate because those are subject to contract law. The only assets subject to probate are assets held in the individual person's name upon their death. So when someone passes away, especially if it's a husband and wife situation and most assets or all assets are owned jointly together, there may not be a need for the probate. There may not be a need to file that will. But if the second spouse passes away with assets remaining in their individual name, then yes, you're going to need to probate in that situation. So be before my uh, mother died, uh, we got together and I, and I was, um, put on all her accounts, or I thought I was put on all her accounts. Mm -hmm. We went to the banks and we got my name put on all the accounts. Uh, she had a um, safe deposit box, which we took out everything but left a few th papers in there. After, But we didn't put my name on the safety deposit box. That safety deposit box had to go through That's probate. right. That's right. It's, it's, um, we, th we think we cover everything. Safe deposit boxes are very important because without that extra person's name on it, you ha there is a special process through the court to gain access to that box for the purposes of finding a will. And if you do, then you have to go back to the court again to actually probate the will. So it takes a lot of time and it can be very expensive for the family members when all they needed to do is add a child onto that box. Uh, what happens when a will is contested? Well, that's really a broad question, but when a will is contested, um, any interested party, and it has to be an interested party, so the, the courts and the law states what, who, who's an interested party, um, can challenge the will, the validity of, validity of the will, whether or not the uh, testator, the person creating it, uh, had the capacity or if there's other issues that they see that they feel can be contested. And um, there is a process through the courts where they can file an objection and file a statement as to why it's being objected. And then the case will come before the court for full hearing in front of the judge and it will be up to the judge to decide um, the outcome of that will. Wow, so it really is important to have to talk to your parents or your or the your loved ones for what you want, depending on your age, you need yes. to you need to talk to your family, whoever they are, older yes. or younger. You need to talk to your family, and you need to get a will as soon as possible. As soon as possible, and power of attorney, power of attorney, and, and a health care proxy. proxy. Absolutely, it's important that whatever your wishes are be placed into that will. Uh, the more language you put in there and the more specific you are, the less chances that it will be contested. Excellent. So we're just about done here. Uh, our time is up, but you gave us some wonderful 
uh, information and really the important things are that will, that health care proxy and that power of attorney. Yes. Yes, if you haven't is. gotten one, you need to get one right now. And this is attorney uh, Lisa Bove. And if you want to learn more about Lisa or WBOA, you can go on to our WBOA website, WBOA.org. Uh, go to the um, member uh, section and you can find her and find out more about us and her. Thank you. Thank you, Freda. And have a great day. Thank you, you too.